everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com, here to do your monthly angel card reading for August 2017. And this is going to be a very powerful month. We have a full moon lunar eclipse happening, a new moon solar eclipse happening. There's a lot happening in this month of August. So let's go ahead and get started by telling you what card decks we're going to use and what your stones of choice are for your special message card. So for this monthly reading, we're going to be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha for the main message for everyone. And your special message card, depending on your stone of choice, is going to be coming from the Goddess Guidance Oracle deck by Doreen Virtue. So let's take a look at your stones of choice before we get into the universal and astrological energies for the month. Your first stone of choice is going to be an amethyst, okay? And I want you to just go with your intuition as far as which stone of choice you want to choose for this month. So the amethyst has that wonderful purple vibration connected with the crown chakra, uh, opening up your higher guidance and wisdom and um, kind of activating that sense of clear cognizance or just clear knowing. Your second stone of choice is going to be a clear quartz crystal point. This is a pretty powerful one. It's very clear as you can see. So it's got that clarity, that intensity with that clarity. It's almost a crystal that you could use for scrying, you know, and, and sort of like when people look in crystal balls to see things or divine things, you could actually look into this crystal because it's so clear. But the clear quartz crystal is going to intensify energies or intensify your intentions. The last stone of choice is going to be celestite. The celestite is that beautiful kind of light blue or cloud blue color and sky color, I suppose you should say. And that's going to relate to the throat chakra, speaking clearly, um, communicating clearly. So all forms of communication are enhanced with the celestite as well as connecting with the angelic realm. These are all very powerful stones to connect with the higher dimensional energies. So again, your stones of choice are the amethyst, the clear quartz crystal, or the celestite. So let's take a moment and talk about the universal energy first for the month of August. Again, if we think about what universal year we're in for the year 2017, 2017 adds up to a 10, we reduce that down to a 1. So we've been in a one universal year as far as the collective, the planet, and which is about new beginnings. New beginnings, fresh starts, new directions, um, leadership, um, assertiveness, courage, all of these things are ruled by that number one, by that, that energy of the new beginnings and new directions that we've been in. Now, the month of August is the eighth month of the year. So if we add the one universal year to the number eight, the month of August, we get 18. So if we reduce the 18 down, we'll talk about the reduced number of vibration first, the one plus the eight is equal to a nine. So that's the last of the single digits. And it's very telling because this month is going to be like an ending to a cycle. Because as we get to September, September will be a nine month and that'll actually be 19 which if we add one plus nine, we'll reduce down to a 10, which becomes a one. So basically this two month period of time of August going into September is about endings and new beginnings. And again, this month of August is surrendering to the divine plan. The number nine is about having faith and trust, going with the flow and just surrendering. So it might not feel like you have a lot of control over what's happening and that's gonna uh, again be uh, implicated by these eclipses that we have because the eclipses are strong intense energies that sort of redirect us on our path if we need to be redirected so again that nine energy it's clearing out old stuff old emotional baggage things that we have to release and let go of old thoughts old ideas old belief systems old circumstances and situations um, maybe even old relationships or we can recreate the relationship if we can okay so 
The number 18, let's look at the double digit for a minute. The number 18 is the, um, actually vibrates to, it's not a karmic number or anything, but it vibrates to the moon card in the tarot deck. So I'm going to show you the one from the Syrian Starseed Tarot. And in this deck it's called Luna. Again, it's Major, major Arcana number 18. And the moon card is all about our subconscious belief systems, our subconscious desires, our emotions, our feelings on a very deep level. And this card, you know, you can see that the card itself, there's a lot of darkness here. It's nighttime, but the moon is highlighted here. Luna is the moon. So the moon or our feelings, our emotions are being highlighted in this month of August. Again, it's going to be a time of emotional purging of releasing and letting go on an emotional level things that we've held on to and we're very attached we're very emotional human beings and we're very attached to our emotions and our feelings even if they're challenging ones so this again here's the waters or the ocean which again rules our emotions and our feelings and so it's it's like Luna and the moon or the essence of this month of August is like our feelings and emotions here ruled by the water is being highlighted it's almost like what's been deep in our subconscious or what's been deep underneath and hidden because this you know this ocean here is very dark it looks hidden the moon is starting to shine a light upon it's starting to bring those emotions and those feelings up and so again we're dealing with subconscious patterns that need clearing we're letting go of uh, again old past life emotional or this life emotional energies that we no longer need to hold on to old emotional attachments that we no longer need to be uh, attached to the moon is also about you know our shadow side the shadow the fears the anxieties that's all ruled by the moon too so again this might be a month with all of the intense energies astrologically that will be coming up where we're feeling a lot of these fears and anxieties but again that number nine because August is the ninth month here, uh, a nine universal month. It's about releasing and letting go. It's about surrendering and just going with the flow and again, trusting and having faith that you're being led in the right direction, that you're being led to the right decisions when it comes to your path. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the highlights, astrologically speaking. The very first thing that happens that's probably one of the most important things this month, well aside from the eclipses, is that Uranus is going to retrograde motion on the third. Okay, so Uranus is that lightning bolt energy. It's that higher vibrational God mind energy and it rules sudden and unexpected happenings and redirections and surprises and um, again higher messages because it rules that God mind energy, it rules scientific breakthroughs, it rules astrology, it rules all of that higher esoteric wisdom and knowledge kind of energy. And as it goes retrograde on the third, two to three or four days before and two or three or four days after that date of the third, we're going to feel that intensification of Uranus as it comes to a standstill and gets ready to turn retrograde. So in essence, expect the unexpected because that's that's the motto of Uranus is it is it good is it not so good just expect the unexpected we really don't know um, there's probably going to be some strange and unusual things going on some again sudden and unexpected redirections that we're going through maybe we're we're thinking about following this path or we've been thinking about following a particular path Uranus might come in like a lightning bolt with new energy new information or just a total redirection that you didn't see coming on your path now that can be quite exciting if we have the perspective that it's exciting so look at this as an opportunity look at this as an adventure um, rather than something scary or challenging um, Uranus likes to rock the boat and be a rebel. Uranus is all about freedom energy. So as Uranus slows down to turn retrograde on the third, it's going to be about breaking free, breaking free of illusions, breaking free of limiting constructs, breaking free of um, situations or relationships that are restricting or perhaps holding us back some way and moving forward. Now, let's talk about the lunar eclipse 
On the 7th of August, we have a full moon lunar eclipse at 15 degrees of Aquarius, meaning the moon is at 15 degrees Aquarius, the sun is at 15 degrees of Leo. Okay, the eclipse energy heightens the energy. We already know that a full moon is an intense energy. Whenever the moon becomes full, it intensifies the energy of the sign that the moon is in. Okay, in this case, the moon is in Aquarius. So it's that, again, a higher vibrational, futuristic, scientific uh, type of energy. Uh, the sign of Aquarius rules humanitarian efforts, humanitarian ideas, scientific breakthroughs again. It rules community. And again, because this is an eclipse energy, it's going to heighten the effects of that. Also know that when we have eclipses, like we do this month, that, that eclipse energy lasts for weeks, months on in past the eclipse. So it's, it's said that actually when we have a lunar or solar eclipse like we do um, in case both this month, that the energies are going to last for about six months until the next set of eclipses, which isn't until January 2018. So this is going to have a long lasting effect. And as far as how it affects you personally, it depends on where in your astrological chart, in your astrological soul blueprint, it actually lands. Is it hitting any of your planets? What houses of the zodiac does it um, fall in? Um, and, and that will give you an idea of how it affects you. Now, this will obviously affect humanity on a collective level as well. And again, this is in the realm of Leo and Aquarius. Leo is how we shine our light, it's our sense of courage and confidence and individuality and it's all about creative self-expression. You know, again, how we shine our light out into the world, that's Leo. And then of course the moon is in that sign of Aquarius, which again brings up that humanitarian energy, the collective group energy. Um, it's about banding together with people of like mind, finding our soul family. Uh, again, scientific breakthroughs. Uh, Aquarius actually rules astrology and metaphysical, you know, other types of metaphysical or scientific principles. Now, we do have a Mercury retrograde that's coming up this month. Mercury will actually turn retrograde at 11 degrees of Virgo on the 12th of August. Now, it actually went in, into its shadow towards the end of July, so you may have already, um, as of the last week of July or so, started feeling some interesting things happen with communication and networking and um, your, you know, again, thoughts and ideas. Uh, electronics might have been affected uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, and Mercury is retrograde, it retrogrades all the way back to 28 degrees of Leo and it will turn back to direct motion on September 5th. So pretty much this whole month of August we're affected by the Mercury retrograde, okay, because again it's already in its shadow from the very first day of the month and doesn't go direct until September 5th and then it will be again in its shadow for a few more days until it passes the degree of 11 degrees Virgo where it went retrograde on the 12th. So we have time here with Mercury retrograde in Virgo to go over details, to organize, to make a list of to-dos, um, to gather more information because that's what Virgo likes to do. Virgo likes to analyze, it likes to pay attention to the details, pick things apart, try to understand things on a more logical level. And with all of the intense energies going on, I'm going to bet that things are not making logical sense. Okay, So this is, this is our time period while Mercury is retrograde to, again, try to make some form of sense out of what's going on, but also, again, so that we're not moving too fast through this fast momentum of energy so that we're slowing down our mind and thinking, okay, let's make, let's make a plan or let's try, even though this is a time to go with the flow, Mercury retrograde is going to want to try to make a plan, again, organize and take things step by step in your mind as far as what do I need to do next? What do I need to accomplish next or what decision do I need to make, make next in order to move forward on my path? Okay, so now we get to the solar eclipse. Now this is called the Great American Eclipse because it actually crosses all the way from Oregon 
through the United States, through particular states, until it comes out uh, South Carolina. So this is actually crossing um, a lot of the, the states right through the center of our country. And again, for those of you that are outside the United States, just to let you know that it's called the Great American Eclipse because it's crossing the United States. So this solar eclipse, both the moon and the sun are going to be in Leo. 28, almost 29 degrees of Leo, almost that last degree of Leo. And if you remember back to July, we had a new moon at zero degrees of Leo. Now this new moon solar eclipse is at 28, almost 29 degrees of Leo, the last degree, okay? And this solar eclipse, again, being very powerful, both sun and moon in Leo, the north node, which is our destiny path and what we're supposed to be aspiring and working towards, is in Leo. Um, Uranus is trining that, um, kind of setting things off. Again, sudden unexpected redirections with Uranus connecting to that solar eclipse. Mars is also in Leo, close to the solar eclipse. So it's um, activating. Mars is an activator, an energy, I don't want to say magnifier, but it's going to give energy to that eclipse. Okay, Mars is going to give that energy momentum, that forward movement to that eclipse. So that's going to be a powerful one. There's a lot going on here. And then towards the end of the month, the 25th, Saturn finally turns back to direct motion. So Uranus is going retrograde the beginning of the, of the month. Saturn is turning direct at the end of the month. So those are the highlights. We do have some other things, some planets changing signs and some other things going on. We'll want to tune in every week uh, for the weekly angel card readings to get more of an idea of the specifics of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the message from our angels and guides for the month. Okay, so I decided because this was such an important month that we have those two eclipses, Uranus retrograde, Saturn direct, because this is a, a nine month within a one year, meaning this is like an endings, new beginnings kind of feeling to it. And also have to make mention that uh, August 8th is what's considered the Lion's Gate, which is a whole nother thing um, that you might want to look up as well but it's something that opens a portal of energy to, to allow forth a download of higher dimensional energies around that time. That's actually around the time of the full moon lunar eclipse. So looking at, I, I chose four cards for the month of August because I figured it was such an important month. So usually I choose three, but I decided to choose a fourth one uh, as well. But the first card, and this is interesting because this was the card I showed you Major Arcana 18, which the month of August is, when you add the 10 universal year to 8, which is August, the 8th month. This is actually the first card that truly did come up. When I meditated and I shuffled the deck, this was the first card for the month. So we already talked about this card, emotions, feelings, subconscious patterns, surrendering, um, bringing things to light so that you can release emotional baggage and let go of things. That's in a nutshell what this card is about. That's what this month in part is going to be about. So again, it's going to be emotional. So let's go ahead and turn over the second card. Okay, so the second card is the Ten of Flames. Now the Ten of Flames in the traditional tarot, it's the Ten of Wands or the Ten of Fire. And the traditional meaning of the Ten of Flames often feels like you're carrying a burden and soon that burden will be lifted, okay? And if you look really closely, I don't know how well you can see because the card is actually pretty dark. It may seem like it might be my lighting, but the card actually is dark, but there's a figure here. And the figure is holding a flame, and actually he's got 10 other uh, wands or flames right here, but he's walking up a staircase, can you see? The staircase, again, is really shadowed and dark, but he's walking with this flame, and he's moving up the stairs, towards the light, okay? So this is like carrying, again, a heavy load, carrying a burden, feeling almost like you're at the end, you know? That's kind of what the feeling of the Ten of Wands is. But this is telling you that there's light ahead. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, that you're soon getting to the end of whatever that burdensome, heavy, restrictive energy is all about. Because the Ten is the last number in the minor arcana before we get to the court cards, the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. 
So because this is the last number, we're getting to the end of something. Again, he's climbing the steps. It might be challenging, burdensome. He might feel really heavy, but he's, he's getting to the end of his journey of carrying that burden, and he's going towards the light where it's going to be lighter and brighter, where there's going to be something to look forward to. Okay? And again, this kind of follows all that emotional upheaval of the Luna card, the Moon card. So that can kind of bring about that feeling of heaviness too, that burdensome energy of carrying that emotional burden, carrying all the emotions from the past and from past lives and from karmic belief systems and maybe trauma energies from other lifetimes. You know, again, we're doing a huge purging. Yes. You know, we're kind of in a continue, continual journey of purging, releasing, growing, evolving, expanding. But this month, again, with these eclipse energies and the uh, Uranus retrograde, Saturn direct, this is really a huge, huge turning point for us. So let's, let's see what the last card is. It'll be very interesting to see. Well, I should say the third card. The third card, okay, the third card is actually Major Arcana Zero, and it's called Starseed in this deck. Now in the traditional tarot, this is the Fool card. Major Arcana Zero is the Fool. And the Fool is on the beginning of a new journey, okay? And so, like I said, this is kind of endings and new beginnings all rolled up into one. And yes, it might take us six months from here, as these eclipses are in effect, that eclipse energy is in effect for about six months until the next set of eclipses. So it's not the new beginnings aren't all going to happen at once. We might see a glimmer of them. We might see the redirection. Again, this is kind of a fireball falling down from the sky. It's a star seed. Okay, that star seed is kind of lighting the way to a new adventure, a new beginning, and it takes trust and faith to start out on a new beginning. So we're going to have to, again, surrender this month, go with the flow, but have trust and faith that we're being led in the right direction, just like with the Fool or with the Star Seed here. It's going to be a wonderful new adventure, you know, and, and this, again, this has the feeling of the Star Seed is coming down to a new planet, okay? New planet, new energy, new direction, new situations, new circumstances, new soul family coming in with the Star Seed card. Okay, but look at it from a standpoint of it being uh, a time of adventure, a time of opportunity, a time of excitement. Now we could look at it as it's scary because we don't know what's ahead, what lies ahead, but let's look at this as being exciting instead. So let's look at the fourth card. Let's see what the fourth card has. Okay. Okay. So this is interesting too because it seems like the last couple of weekly readings, maybe the last two or three, at least a couple of them, I feel like the Eight of Flames card came up. And the Eight of Flames, like the Eight of Fire, the Eight of Wands is about fast paced movement. The, the Wands or the Flames is the spiritual element. So this is fast paced movement on the spiritual plane. Here it's almost like a wheel of fortune, but it's a wheel of flame. It's got eight wands coming out in all these various directions, meaning there's going to be a lot of things happening in a lot of different directions. Many things happening at once. Many things happening quickly and fast. And that's part of Uranus going retrograde as well. Uranus retrograde, lightning bolt of energy, sudden and unexpected redirections. Many things happening at once. Freedom energies, breaking free. Again, it looks like the Wheel of Fortune, so it's, it's bringing us again to a new sense of the Wheel of Fortune turning or something new coming in. You know, the wheel is forever. The wheel is forever going round and round and round. And so, again, something exciting is happening here. It might seem a little chaotic, you know, with all of these different things happening at once, but again, we have to have this, this feeling of surrendering and going with the flow. So before we run out of time, let's go ahead and see what your special message card is depending on your stone of choice. So I'm going to give the Goddess Guidance deck a little bit of a shuffle here. And for those of you that chose the um, Amethyst was the first one. So I know you can see the bottom. I'm going to try to not to look in the camera so I can't see what's on the bottom. But I'm just going to look at what card stands out to me for Amethyst people. And this one is really standing out to me. So let's take a look at this. This is 
green Tara, start delegating, okay? The first thing that comes to mind is ask other people for help. Don't do it all by yourself, okay? The message at the bottom says ask others, <laughs> including me, to help you instead of trying to do everything yourself. Well, that's exactly, exactly what I thought. So start delegating. You don't have to be the sole organizer, the sole planner, the one that's doing everything. Now this can also mean not only asking other people for help, but asking your guides and angels for help. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you're trying to redirect your life or move across the country or change a job or you know, whatever it might be, these big changes that you're trying to make, but maybe you feel like you're going it alone. Maybe you don't feel like you have a lot of support or people just have their own things that they're going through so they don't have time to really be there for you. That's okay. You've got a whole entourage of angels and master guides and healers of the light to call upon to assist you. So not only t calling upon Green Tara to help you, um, you know, to reorganize or to uh, delegate uh, things out, delegate them out to the archangels, the ascended masters, the other goddesses. Uh, to help you to move through things. But again, ask other people, friends, family. Maybe you just need some emotional support. Maybe you need some ideas. Um, maybe you need some feedback or someone to just listen to bounce things off of. So again, don't feel like everything has to be done all by yourself. All right, so for those of you that chose the clear quartz crystal, okay, this one right away stands out, clear quartz crystal people, Ooh, I love it. Anya, leap of faith. And it says, take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. And look at how she's putting her hands up to the sky and she's just kind of in that surrendering mode. She's kind of surrendering and she's reaching up and just saying, okay, wherever you want to take me, whatever I'm supposed to be doing, take me there. She's taking that leap of faith and she's allowing herself to be led in the right direction. So this is what you need to do this month. Now take a risk. It doesn't mean to uh, not plan or to not weigh options or things of that nature, but this is going to be a little bit of a risk-taking month for those of you that are, again, it's like the old way isn't working or um, I'm not content, I'm not excited about life. It, it means make a change. Uranus retrograde is going to be like you wanting to break free and making some sort of a change in your life. So allow this energy to come in and maybe take that leap of faith and take that risk to make some sort of change and you'll be a lot happier for it. So for those of you that chose the Celestite, let's give these a little shuffle here and ask for Celestite. This one's calling my attention. Hathor and Receptivity. Okay, and this says, allow yourself to receive. This will increase your intuition, energy, and ability to give to others. You know, that aspect of surrender that we're in for the month of August, that is to be receptive. That's what surrendering is all about. When we surrender to the divine plan, when we surrender to divine timing, it means being receptive and allowing yourself to receive the blessings the universe has to offer. There's times in our life where we have more of an ability um, with the energies to direct our lives, to take charge, to make things happen. And then there's other times where we just have to, again, let go and go with the flow and allow things to unfold naturally. This is one of those times for everyone, but especially for Celestite people. Let go and be receptive and allow things to just come, allow things to come. Um, I also get a very emotional feeling about this card. So again, I feel like your emotions really are somehow at play, um, kind of releasing. I feel like there's a lot of releasing of old emotional energies that's happening with, with you all in this month. Okay, so I hope you've liked this monthly angel card reading. Thank you for all of you that comment and share and subscribe. I send you all much love and light and much emotional support and spiritual support and sending you many, many blessings. Until we meet again, namaste. Mm -hmm.